Jeff has always been a um, community-minded person. Jeff needs to come back to Detroit, and I'm trying to help him get back here. And then back. Where would he be? In here? Yeah, we want him in this building. We want him in this building. And then, I mean, anybody that knows Jeff knows that he works with artists. Doesn't, you know, he's not on a pedestal, and we're down there, and he's up there. You know, he works with them, he gives people shows. Um, he, you know, he does a lot of the CCS undergrad shows, a lot of the Cranbrook MFA shows he used to. And, uh, you know, he's out in Pontiac, and the space is amazing out there, but it's, you know, it's Museum of New <sighs> York in Detroit. See, I, I haven't gotten out there yet. Yeah. Well, it's and, hard um, it's Pontiac and, you know. But it's, yeah. it's, 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 not really, it's not really hard. It's, it's a great space. Well, you know, it's people in Detroit have a tendency to not leave Detroit. Well, that, well I know, cool. it's the gas. Like, I haven't been to uh, Paint Creek in a long time yeah, either because... That's, that's but the thing is that too often, though, I think part of the issue is that people often still define their, our community by a political border as a mm -hmm. true. How far are you willing to go to see a good show? A lot of those same people say, oh, Pontiac is too far. Won't hesitate to go to New York or Chicago. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's not really that far. Yeah. You know, you're talking so, a 30 minute drive. Oh, yeah. So it's not really that far. You're you know, right. We've got friends who are all strange and go as a group. You know, right. divide the cost. Well, in this situation, we could just cut out that unnecessary, <coughs> you know, stipulation of people not wanting to leave and then bring Mona back to Detroit. Yeah, but the only thing I would say is that when Jeff was here, uh -huh. the thing was the economics. Mm -hmm. And the thing to me, though, is also, I believe, in that let's exploit the economics. If it's cheaper for Jeff to be in Pontiac, mm -hmm. there's no reason why we can't go to Pontiac. True. You know, and but then the same difference could have could be said. There's no reason why Jeff can't be in Detroit. Oh no. Economics. Right, right. But the thing was, that I think he found the economics here unfavorable when he was over on Washington yeah. Boulevard. Well, that, that was, yeah. well, in the book building, now that was yeah, that was different. Yeah. And and now here in the Russell, it may be more. I think more but, could happen in the Russell. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is that, to me, though, it's also at the same time get people to move around our community. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times there's very good shows, very good work being done, but people aren't willing to move around. True. And to, to not think of Detroit as you must be here in Detroit True. to be in the community. But to mm -hmm. redefine community by saying, okay, let's define our community by a certain radius. Now, for me, that's 150 miles, but that's how far I'm going oh, yeah. to drive. I'm a moment, a moment to know to see a good show. You need to yeah. start videoing again, Dozier. Well, I am, but soon, but the reason why I stopped doing that, because what I did behind that was to get all the different venues to start doing that. Right. Even being one, you focus on the one show. You can do it in depth. You can interview the artist, you can take pictures of the work, put that on the internet. The economics are such as it's inexpensive to do. And that way, it can be far more immediate than one person trying to do 10 shows. You know, because that's what I was trying to do. And it was, I found out the economics will soon become unfavorable because one, you got to store all that video on the hard drive that you got to buy. You got to take more time. And, and you know, I only have so much time I can devote to that. But if each gallery or each artist who has a show, says, I want this show documented, I want visuals, I want to be interviewed, that should be done. Now, if the gallery isn't willing to do it, then the artist should take it upon themselves to do it. And it's important because when a person wants to see what's happening culturally in your community, they go on the internet. That information is pulled up. Well, yeah, if they don't true. see it, then they start assuming, well, that community is culturally dead mm -hmm. or marginal at best. One of the reasons why most people think of New York and Chicago, let's say, for example, in the Midwest, they think of Chicago before they think of Detroit, because they do a good job of telling you what's there. Mm -hmm. We well, can do the same thing. Well, yeah, I mean, we're basically talking about perception. If we put off this perception that something's happening, i.e. videos, documentation, then something is happening, right? Right, because if they see it. Yes. And, and, then, and there's an aggregate effect yes. of that. The more that's on there, the more they see it, and the more they pull up, and they say, well, things are happening in that community. You know, the same, the same idea can be with the perception of people not going the 150 radius, because the perception is that if, it, if it's happening, it has to be in Detroit. It's, I think it's harder to break down this perception than it is to just bring Mona to Detroit. Well, see, that you know what I mean? The long-term yeah. effect would be to break the perception and say, it's open everywhere. But the immediate response would be, let's just get Mona in Detroit well, and see, work on the perception. Well, to me, the, the thing is that, 
as it is right now, so it's easier to have a video, show it on them, put it up there, and then say, people, <coughs> the hope that people look at that video, so wait a minute, that's what really interesting work. I'm going there. I want to go there. I'm going, and I've had that happen where a person emailed me and told me, I went to that show because I saw your video of that show. Well, that's exactly why when I do my videos of mm -hmm. the shows, I don't like to like linger mm -hmm. because I don't want people just looking at the video. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I want mm -hmm. them to go to the show. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And I say, mm -hmm. okay, go see the show. You're in town, go see the show. Mm -hmm. The people that subscribe to my channel who are mm -hmm. not in town, mm -hmm. okay, I don't expect them. So this gives them an idea of what's still going on, in, going on? in their hometown because they yeah. were from here or I've got people who... Um, who just, I didn't know what this was going on in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And my videos are decidedly not like professional because they but shake they, a lot. Well, yeah, across. Well, yeah. I mean, the whole idea of what we're talking about is all back to perception. And, and it goes back to like even documentation, just like in a show. You know, when you do an exhibit, what's left after the show? The, right. The photos, the, the, the words, what's left after, you know, a bunch of shows. Just a video or an idea. When you have documentation, you, you know, you subscribe to perception that there is something happening mm -hmm. and, and, and when you have photos of, of the show, something did happen and when you have words from the show, something happened and besides the work existing. Exactly. exactly. And that's the reason why I'm a strong advocate of that because I also say to people, you gotta keep in mind, you do a show five years from now, how many people remember that show? If somebody wants to know more about that artist, where do they go? Mm -hmm. You know, so you have that record. You have you have an archival record that they can look back on, and again, that adds to that aggregate of totality oh, yeah. of information of culturally what's happening in that exactly. community. And that's why I'm also an advocate of that because it will show in a greater totality what's happening in that community over time. Right. And that way, it becomes now a record for our historians and others who are doing the research. Because even your artist, as an artist, you change over time. Right. You know, and it would be nice to be able to look back, well, you know, what was I thinking 20 years ago, you know? Because you had certain ideas 20 years yeah. ago you may not have now. Yeah. But you have a record you can look back on, or if somebody wants to, you know, do something on you, they can go back and see your ideas, what you thought about your work, whatever. I think, I th and I think coming up, in this mm -hmm. current, you know, wave, as some people would call it, is that there is this added um, uh, dimension that you have to photograph and you have to have a website. And I think that's more conscious with uh, a lot of the artists that are coming up now. So they are very aware to document themselves, to be mm -hmm. this entity within a Detroit art scene. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like I think that's a conscious thing that's happening more and more. Um, and, um, you know, I, although I am surprised at how many artists don't have websites, you know, but. I'm, I'm not because there are, uh, as amazing as it is, there are still a lot of people who are considered, and I put it this way, who are still in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of galleries that way, and I see a lot of artists that way. Yeah. And because I've asked artists, okay, you had this show, did you visually document it? No. Yeah. Did you have it? No. So the, the only way this show will continue to exist in the memory of, of those who came, and we know how memories will, can fade memories. over time. So it has it, really let me know. Not only are the guys, but all the artists, are they're still in the 20th century. Because yeah. I've even had some guy, well, you know, it's kind of expensive. I said, it's not expensive. Gildas yeah. well, is, is, is videoing this with an inexpensive camera. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, you don't have to buy a, you know, a, a five-figure camera to do this. Oh, right. Right. And, and right. even if you want to do the edit, you just want to put the raw video up there. Yeah. You know, this is they, a flip camera. You know, yeah. but like if dollars. you have, you know, and it comes yeah. with almost any computer, the basic editing software, oh, yeah. a, a camera for two or three hundred dollars, you can shoot decent video. And they've been mm -hmm. making now the cameras inexpensively now with high definition video. Mm -hmm. yep. So the, the technology is there. But yes, you do have to use it. But if you don't make it a point to use it, nothing yeah, is going to know, happen. I don't know who these artists are that are living in this 20th century, but I can mm -hmm. tell you that the people I know, mm -hmm. you know, like Dave Flogger, mm -hmm. have websites and document mm -hmm. their work, and it's mm -hmm. a regular part of the studio process. So, mm -hmm. just to, I gotta wrap up because I'm gonna, I don't know how to edit, so I'm limited to what I can <laughs> do on. So, just tell me again, what is your next show, and when is it, and I will be there. The next show at ORG Contemporary is 